Hey, let's have a walk in the tea gardens today. I'm coming to He Juan. Let's have a look and talk about a serious topic. Come on. So you've heard about climate change, right? And do you think the topic is discussed much here? I know a lot of people worry in the West about the future of the tea gardens and what's going to happen. So I'm going to share my thoughts about this here. The first year I spent in Yunnan in 2010, the province was going through a severe drought. And the problem is that we've been in a constant drought state in the past 10, 15 years. Most of the years have been a drought. So now I guess we can just acknowledge that this is the new normal and that we, we cannot really say that each year is an exceptional year. It seems that climate change is real after all. And we will see the climate getting drier and drier during the rainy season and potentially, according to the predictions, have heavier rains during the rainy season. So we'll have a higher contrast between the seasons. And so what will be the impacts on the tea industry? What can we really do about this? We can expect to have an even more drastic difference of quality between the spring harvest, which is during the dry season, and the rainy season harvests in summer and early autumn. So do the tea farmers want this and what can be done to mitigate that? Well, here is an illustration of what can be done. You can plant shade trees in the tea gardens. During the years of drought, which has been like 70% of the years in the past 15 years, we can see that the ancient tea gardens uh, keep a certain stability in their output compared to the, the modern plantations growing in open fields. And so in many places they plant shade trees, even in the natural tea gardens. I think it, it provides benefits in terms of drought because the forest cover can retain humidity uh, a little bit more. Actually in Xishuangbana, uh, in the past 20 years, there's been a, a, a drastic climate change. There used to be a lot more mist and in the 90s and 2000s, they planted a lot of uh, rubber trees. Interestingly, rubber plantations were highly encouraged because it was seen as a, as a sustainable uh, crop because uh, according to the Chinese uh, planning, it still counts as a forest. So in the statistics, they wouldn't really degrade the environment. They were just replacing a natural forest with a managed forest. But in practice, this led to a climate change. But what we can see as simple farmers is that we get more extreme uh, weather and the most bothering can be the lack of water in uh, spring. And you might wonder what these pipes are. This is not for irrigating the tea gardens, but actually Jing Mai has always lacked a bit of water and now with the development of tourism, they've had to build those pipes. This is quite incredible. They drag the, they bring the water from the mountain opposite to Jing Mai from uh, Fa Zhanhe. And uh, this is to cater to a higher uh, influx of tourists and visitors. I've spent my early years thinking a lot about the issue of climate change and I would say I worry less and less. Not because it will not happen, it will probably get worse than what we expected. But I've completely dropped my hope in humanity to be conservative, to protect the environment. Fortunately, people are quite smart and we're quite good at engineering nowadays. And I believe that technology will save us from this climate change. And when we think about technology, we immediately imagine some sci-fi scenarios, but actually uh, history proves that we have no idea what will happen in the future. So we'll just have to see. Maybe the future will be about uh, raising cows in the tea gardens and raising chicken and having everything grow in the forest. We'll see. I believe the tea gardens here can easily adapt to the climate change because there is one aspect of tea cultivation here which is quite unique to Yunnan and allows the tea gardens to be extremely resilient. 
and that's the reproduction of the tea gardens by seeds and not by cuttings. Each tea tree has its own gene pool, which means that uh, when the climate changes, there is a selective pressure and the tea trees which are not adapted to drought conditions uh, will die quickly, which of course in the short term is too bad, but you will have a new varietal being created which will be drought resistant. Uh, this would not happen if we used clonal varietals. Uh, as soon as one dies, probably all of them would die because they have exactly the same uh, tolerances to water stress. And we're not worried about the invasive species either because we have natural predators in the tea gardens and we can expect those to remain despite the climate change. If we foster a high biodiversity in the tea gardens, we'll have more resilience against, against invasive species. So I'm not really worried about the future of the tea gardens. Now, you could think it's a shame if the ancient tea gardens get destroyed because of the climate change. But actually, uh, a lot of the, the tea trees in the past hundreds of years have gone through many uh, extreme weather events. And uh, so it's natural that some of the tea trees die. Now, I was talking with someone and uh, noticing that a lot of tea trees die these days. Mm. But I, I was thinking, isn't there a statistical bias? Isn't that normal that uh, the elder uh, members of the population are more likely to die? And when you walk around the tea gardens, you're more likely to see an old tree that is dying than a young tree that is dying. Um, but yet, even though you consider that bias, it's true that um, the new tea harvests and maybe the climate change, both like the added pressure of our harvesting more and the, the droughts we, we've been through has definitely taken its toll on the, the old tea tree population. But are people actually worried about the climate change and the tea trees dying? I feel like our customers and tea lovers are actually more worried than the farmers themselves. And this maybe has to do with uh, different mindsets here. Because unlike the ancient civilizations of the plains, the hills have no history. I was talking with the neighbors uh, a couple of days ago about the history of Jingmai, and it's, uh, it's incredible how, how few they know about the history. Everything is just uh, hearsay and there's no real record. And it seems people aren't that interested in the past. And that's how the life is, I think, in the hills. People just survive day on day and just expect to have a good harvest this year. And in a way, don't worry about the past, know about the future. So I want to take you to a nice place here. It's a spot that I used to go to when I was younger, back 10 years ago. And so I think this uh, carelessness mindset has always been uh, prevalent here. And while you could think it's a shame that people don't want to uh, protect their heritage and everything, it's actually also a good thing because it makes people uh, very flexible, very adaptable. And I think that's how people in the hills have been able to survive so far because the life has changed drastically here in the past 60 years, even what we call traditional lifestyle uh, now was a novelty 50 years ago, you know, so, and we don't really know what the, the true traditional lifestyle was because these people were probably semi-nomads uh, just a few centuries ago. We don't even know exactly how old these ancient tea gardens are, but apparently they should be over a thousand years old, so at least the, the Dai or the Bulang here have been settled for a while. Um, but I want to illustrate the point that I'm making, the philosophy of the hills. And we're quite close to our objective now. You see, this is what happens in the hills of Southeast Asia. The land that was never willing to be conquered or ruled by an empire. This is what remains of that scenic spot in which we used to hang out when we were younger. The wood has decayed, eaten by all the termites and ants. 
And people don't maintain it here. People typically don't maintain things. They just let them decay, being washed by the sand of time and build something new. And with every generation, new planks of wood are made from the chopped down trees and life goes on. The only thing that remains stable is the will of people, the will for the future generations to thrive and the flexibility, the will to survive and adapt in adverse conditions. So I would say, don't worry too much about the climate change. People here are very strong and they will know how to make wonders out of this decayed wood. But of course, building new things, adapting to a new environment takes works and a lot of uh, intelligence. And if you're young and you don't know what to do and you want to find a new use to these old tiles, find new way to use the resources of Earth to our advantage and to adapt to a new environment, please go study engineering and I'm sure you will bring your new tile to the world. Thank you for watching and see you later.